If you have not watched the part 1, I encourage you to do so because in the part 2, I sometimes refer to the first one. Hey everybody, it's time for the part two. So I made a little simulation in Houdini using vellum grain and a custom setup to change p scale over time. As you can see, the p scale is reducing and before the death of each particle, they pop up, pop, pop, pop. And it's very interesting because sometimes it will push some particle out. And I set my color with the Nage attribute. Uh, Nage attribute, it's the uh, age of the particle normalized. So it means that uh, this attribute is, the value is zero when the particle is uh, born and one when the particle is dying. So I will try to export all kinds of attributes into uh, Bifrost. For that, I will use CD color, ID of course, in age I explain, P scale and V for velocity. I scale up the uh, geo um, and I scale the P scale too because when you scale a geo it works for the velocity but not for the P scale so I have to do manually with a little line you can do multiple ways in Houdini. After that the uh, workflow is very simple. I just rename all the attributes to be compatible with Bifrost. So I figure out some attribute don't need to be renamed. For example, an age, which is a custom attribute. And um, I think color, CD, point color, I'm not sure about that. I think it's uh, better to export uh, using the attribute name from Bifrost. After that, no modification except one into the wrap aromic output uh, compared to the part one. I export um, one anomic file per uh, frame. When you've got a very, very, very heavy simulation, if, yeah, I think it's better. Um, no problem for the motion blocker because uh, all the velocity information is stored into uh, the anomic. So I export this and now, now go into Maya. First of all, there's a little uh, difference be between uh, the part one and the part two. I don't use the same node to load my anomic. I will use a node named file cache. Let's the node in read mode. I will check. Oh, I will take one, for example. When you've got this message, uh, don't be uh, worried about that. Just say yes. It will not um, write a file on your disk. Here, first thing I have to do is changing uh, the frame. Here, I just load one frame. So I will replace the four digit with uh, hashtag, 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 hashtag. It means read all. Uh, be sure you have got the good uh, frame range here. Be careful, you have to connect the first object and not the out object to the output to have something. And as you can see, I've got particle here in my view when I just change my uh, timeline, it works. Another way to load uh, Alambic, but it's better because when you look at the uh, attribute you've got on, on, into your, your stream, you've got a lot of attributes uh, compared to the part one. To see the attributes in Bifrost stream, you just have to right click here and add watch point. When you do that, you've got kind of information with all the attributes you have in your stream. As you noticed, um, when we export Alambic, you understand that P uh, attribute in, in Houdini is point position, but all that kind of thing, I export it and rename it before export. So it can be very useful. First of all, we can use, like in the part one, a set Arnold point settings to change the type of the particle. So I will play here and here and here, thank you, and change it to, for example, disk or sphere. Uh, if, you've, if you use another renderer uh, than Arnold, you can use a set point shape. I think it's a generic node for that, so I will just stop it, thank you, it works, and go instead. And here, um, what is interesting, it's you can see in the viewport, so I can put in disk or quad or uh, sphere or uh, whatever, 
uh, it's quite the same. I, uh, Arnold handle a point, disc and a sphere, but not all of them. So I will just use this because my render is Arnold for that. But if you use other render, try to test this one instead. Uh, the thing I want to do now is changing the p-scale, so the size. Uh, remember, I renamed the p-scale attribute to point size. So I will use a get geo property. I will plug the first object to geometry, name of the, um, of the attribute, so it's point underscore size. Okay. And be aware and very um, careful about that, you have to change the type. So you've got two ways to do that. The first one is right click here and value type and set to array float. Array float. Why array? Because there's a lot of void. Array float. Another way to do that is create a value node and it will create a node and connect it. And here you can change the type of uh, attribute you want to plug so here it's a array I don't need this anymore I prefer this because there's a lot of not after that so I've get my point size after that I won't put a multiply node put data to the input and create a value node like a constant something like that change it to float it so don't change anything of course <laughs> i will put the output into here so my array will multiply to a single float there's different kind of uh, shape for the input and output this kind of shape means array and this kind of shape means only one value but it's okay it's like in Odini, you can multiply an array with a single float that's not a problem so I will change the value to 2, for example, and I must put set back into the stream. So for that, I will set, create a node name, set geo properties, property. Okay. So I will plug it into geometry, plug the output into data, and plug the out geometry to point. And now, I have to set the name of the property, of course, so it's point underscore size. It works. So when I change to 1 or 10, the particle is changing. So it's very useful. What about the color? I didn't figure out how to get color in, in, in the viewport, but I, I find a way to put color into my renderer. For that, I have to tweak a shader. So we we'll first um, create a surface, a standard surface, assign it to my Bifrost. Okay, let's render. Okay, I've got my sphere, it's better. And let's use a preset. Do what you want, ceramic. Okay. I have a little bit speculum. As you can see, the motion blur is quite okay still. Um, I will stop my render. To get the information uh, of my Bifrost and put into my shader, there's a node uh, named user data. And you can import color, float, int, or string. First of all, the color. So this node, um, what does this node? This node is taking information uh, from a mesh, from a, a geometry, and put it back into the shader. So here I have to uh, tell what attribute I want to use. So it's point underscore color. Okay. And I will plug to the base color, for example. Let's render again. Okay. I have back my color that is so into my object. So it works quite good. If I want to change the color, for example, I can use uh, another attribute. As you know, I've got many attributes into my stream. For example, I've got the age or the ID. I will test the two of that and show you a different stream. So I will use a user data int. Okay. I will rename it a little bit. So here I, I import 
point coro and here it's an int with import point id which is a unique number for each particle so I put point id and i will make a color randomly for each particle so let's make a a e random node i will plug the old value into the input int this one input int okay and after out color to pass color let's wonder again it works it works and let's test to import uh, i use the data float and let's test import the point nage so the value is zero at start at the birth of the particle and one at the death of the particle so i will try to uh, map it on into a ramp so a uh, e ramp rgb because i want a color so i put here in the input and change some color okay i've got the custom ramps I had to resume i just get the point nage put into a ramp and plug it into the bass color and it will not work because i forgot as you can see there's no ramp in my color anymore so i forgot to change something in my ramp you have to tell uh, to don't use v but custom and now when i remember i've got a ramp I think I have to tweak a little bit more my run, but it works. I can change the color, so I don't need to export. Up, if I put here, I will get some green, green at the end of uh, the life of my particle. So it works. For uh, tweaking the velocity, uh, there's a specific node, and uh, we will not use a geo point uh, get geo. Uh, properties and set your property nodes but get point velocity and set of course point velocity so the thing i will put here and point velocity here and i will just plug here in the middle okay put this here here the network is not very friendly i think i prefer houdini one but then i'm not objective so here when i hit render nothing changed i've got the mushroom blur um, i can of course multiply it so it's exactly the same stream so i can take this copy past to resume, I get the velocity with the get point velocity and multiply it by one for the moment and just go back to my stream with a set point velocity. And when I hit render, nothing changed. But if I take this again, I put three for example, as you can see, my velocity is much more important. So I will stop and we try to use another attribute to change my velocity, for example. I will get so I will not, I will copy this and this. Copy past, up, kill the line. And I will try to not get the point size, of course, but the point nage. So I will get the nage, okay. And instead of that, I will plug the data here. And don't need the point size here. So I will get the velocity, I will get the nice the nage, sorry, and multiply the velocity uh, with the nage. I will multiply it again with a value oh, value node by 10, for example, and multiply the whole thing by 10 and render again. Okay. Oh Yes, it work. As you can see, I've got no motion blur at the birth of the particle and a lot, of, a lot of motion blur at the end of the life of the particle. So it's working. So for that, I can do the reverse. For example, like, let's make a value. Let's subtract. Subtract one 
by point nature. So at the start it will be 1 at the birth of the particle and at the end it will be uh, 0. In Udini there's a node in a verb named complement would do exactly the same thing. So now I can I can perhaps just replace my stream here and it works. Okay, so I don't need to use an array, but only a float. So as you can see, I just change the velocity. I uh, multiply the velocity uh, by the nage, the inverted nage. So at the beginning, there's a lot of motion blur. At the end, no motion blur. Okay, so here's the basic uh, principle of uh, Bifrost. Uh, I think it's quite uh, quite easy to, to tweak all the alambic so you don't need to re-export cache again and again and again. You can use all the data you want into the Bifrost to change the velocity, the point size for example, and into uh, your shader to change the color uh, with uh, all that kind of information we just see uh, right now. The user data node exists for each renderer. For Redshift, I think the name is quite the same. It's user data. And for a random R, for example, it's the name is Primvar. So for all the renderer, you have to find the node to get information from your geometry. Here it's particle, but it's working with mesh or all that kind of thing. So I hope this tutorial will be helpful for you. And I see you next time for next tutorial. Bye bye. Thank you.